What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another DE Hammer video. Today we're talking Gerbil, the firmware that lives on the Adreno that helps move around your hobby CNC machine. We're going to talk a little bit about what Gerbil is, uh, we're going to talk a couple of settings, and maybe a tip or trick here or there um, in how I have mine set up. So if you like these videos, they're helping you out. Remember to hit that subscribe and bell button down below to keep up with all the latest videos. Let's get into this. What is Gerbil? In its most basic sense, it is firmware that enables you to control your CNC machine. Gerbil communicates the instructions it receives from your control software out to your motors, your spindle, your laser, etc., etc. It is open source, so you can get Gerbil off of GitHub, go down there, download it, and then flash it to your Arduino. Today, we're going to be using GSender as our control software to change our Gerbil settings. Quick note before we get started, make sure you have a copy of your settings. So we'll come in here, then we'll go to notepad and paste them in there. So now we have our original settings. Before we change anything, we can always go back. If we don't like the settings we chose, we can change everything back, have those on hand, save that, print it out. But we have this just as a backup in case we make a change and we forgot what change we made. As stated earlier, Gerbil lives on the Adreno, so you're going to need a control software, and as I mentioned earlier, we're using G-Center. Now, you could use other software as well, CNC, JS, UGS, whatever for your control software, but your control software needs to be for Gerbil. First thing we're going to want to do here is connect to our machine. So, we'll come over here. It's on COM5. It's connected. And on my 3018, I do have limit switches and I do have a homing cycle enabled. So I need to run that before to uh, clear out any alarms before we can get going. Now, when you load up, it's going to probably be on probe or some, it'll be on probe or whatever. We're going to come over to console and when it loads up, it goes ahead and runs this dollar dollar and prints out all your settings right here. One of the things I do like about G-Cinder here is if we come over to firmware, hey, hey, we got a GUI for our uh, Gerbil settings. And we can come in here and change everything up that way. But we are going to stick to the console. So that way, for those who don't have a GUI for their firmware settings or their Gerbil settings, you can follow along. All right, so first thing first, how do you format a, a command to Gerbil? Well, it's going to be dollar sign and then a number equals another number. That's the format of changing a setting. So let's say I wanted to change here the step direction. That's dollar uh, three equals zero. Right now I have it set to two and we'll get a little bit into more of what all those settings mean, but that's how we would change dollar three. Another thing, let's come here. Let's disconnect real quick. Disconnected. Again, it wants me to run a homing cycle, but if I come here and go dollar X, that cleared the alarm. So, when you're using your control software, these buttons and everything, all they're doing is sending commands like $x or $h for a homing cycle to the machine to run those operations. Pretty cool, but that's really all a control software is. It's just a GUI that is sending those commands to your CNC machine. All right. Now that we've kind of gone over all that, let's jump into our first topic, which is going to be axis directions and homing direction. Let's go ahead and bring up 
these settings again real quick and let's go look at dollar three all right couple things before we j get into the nitty gritty of dollar three and dollar twenty three First, just because this is how my machine is set up does not mean it is the same for yours. Okay, the wires could be connected differently or rerouted differently and plugged in differently. So just even if you had the same prover as I did, the, it could be set up differently. So keep that in mind. This is more of a guideline of how you can work through and get your machine set up for you. All right, so here we see I have $3 equals two. What does that even mean? Well, let's pull in this handy dandy little chart here. And in this first column here, we have the setting value and we can see mine is set to two. And what does that mean? Well, the is the X inverted? No, Y is inverted and Z is not. All right. So let's move that over and let's just bump this up a little. Let's put that to 20 and let's go X right. And we'll go 20 right. Let's get it close to the center here. And now if we wanted to, let's say if you were hitting that and let's say you were hitting X plus and you wanted it to go right, but it was going left, you would want to invert your X and only your X. So right here, we would need to set $3 to one. So we'll go $3 equals one. Enter, and you can see there, it did that. Now, if I hit X plus, or the, what we would assume to be go right, it goes left. So if any of your axes are going in the way you don't want them to go, I'll have uh, a link down below where you can find uh, these settings and then you can change and invert whichever axis you need to invert. Now here's another cool little thing. As I said in the beginning, I had my dollar three as two. And we'll go ahead. We've changed that. Now if I hit Y plus, it's going to bring the table toward me. And why is that? it is moving in a positive direction. So if we think of this part right here as zero, zero, and we want it to go up 20 millimeters, we want the table to come towards us. Whereas on my long mill, if I did that, the Y axis would just move towards the back of the machine. Whereas the bed is moving towards us here. And I'm gonna go ahead and zero, all of these out real quick. And we're gonna, I'm gonna run a little test here. So let's get some paper. And this is another thing. If you're testing out your Gerbil settings and you don't want to be messing around with the spindle and all that, you can really tape a, I prefer to do a Sharpie or you know something that's gonna bleed a little bit more. Uh, you could also do a pen and I'm just doing the Sharpie in this case, just to get a little bit better visual for recording. Let's go ahead and get a piece of paper and I just stuck some uh, painter's tape down there to get this to stick on there. Let's get that lid off. There we go. And I'm just gonna do that real quick so we can see our edges. Again, we're not trying to get too technical here on that. Okay, and again, now I want to go in the negative space. So we're getting back to zero. We're getting as close as we can. We'll re-zero these out. And you can see here, our tool bit is showing us down at zero, zero. Get that flat again. Let's bring down our Z. All right, we'll bring this down here. We'll go in positive direction. Now let's load a file here. I have two files. I have one test lower left home. And so let's open that up. We're gonna zero all these out. Now let's lower this down a little bit. There we go, we're drawing on it. All right, 
So we'll zero, bump that back up, six. All right, now let's run this real quick. All right, so we can see we got hello world and it did what we expected it to. All right, let's go back to zero here. Then remember earlier I said, when we hit this Y negative, we want it to move in the negative space of our work area. And when we hit it positive, we want it to go positive. Well, on my 3018, the first thing I was doing a lot of were acrylic. Pretty much that's all I was doing with this machine for months. And so there were several times I would forget to invert my image and I get out there and it was just uh <laughs> it was a headache to say the least because I would for if you forget so one of the things I did on this machine was in my dollar three equals zero so now when I hit negative y that means the bed is actually going to move up towards us now so The control software thinks we're moving in a negative direction, but really we're moving in a positive direction. But you'll see what we're what's going on here in just a second. Let's get this over there. Now let's re-zero this out. I'm going to change this uh, duct tape and a sharpie. You can see it's very loose, so I need to make sure it's not going pressing down too hard. We'll come over here and re-zero this out, bring it up. We'll zero there. It's a little bit different. We got a lot of movement in your Z axis. So that's part of the important, that's a important thing to have is your, you know, a sturdy Z, but let's go ahead, hit that. Now, it's saying we're at zero, zero. Our Y is actually, when we move it this way, we're moving negative in, relative negatively in the workspace. Watch what happens when we run this with, remember we're set for lower left. Now, if I hit start job. And there we go. So let's take this off. Okay, so our first one, we can see hello world, it came out, we can read it and our Top one, the last one we just did is backwards. But if we flip it around, hey, look, hello world. So, so let's say you were doing a lot of acrylic work and you didn't want to have to go and flip around the image because you forget and you're just in a hurry. Um, or this could just be an easier way. So it's this becomes part of your production. And this is the only thing this machine is gonna be doing is acrylic. You could set it up that way. And then let's, which brings us into 23. First, let's uh, just double check what our 23 is set at. And that's our homing cycle, cycle here. Direction, it's set to three. And if we run that homing cycle now, three puts us in that back left corner. So dollar twenty three is pretty simple. Uh, depending on what your dollar three is set at, it could change the position. So our so our dollar three right now is at two, and our twenty three is at one, and we can see it's in the back left corner. So now, if we were to change our dollar twenty three equals zero. Now, if we run a homing cycle, we can see it puts us in the back right corner. But let's go ahead, change dollar three equals, when were we at? We were on two, let's put it to zero. Now let's run that homing cycle again. And now we're in the front right. So get your dollar three set up. So your machine is set up how you want it. 
then play around with the dollar twenty three to get it to home to the pos position you want. Remember, even though I have mine set to dollar three zero and nothing is inverted, when I hit this plus, I'm moving in the negative direction, not the positive direction. When I hit the negative, I'm moving in the positive direction of my workpiece. So, as I said at the beginning of this part, not all things are created equal or shipped equal. For you, your dollar three could be set to zero. And when you press Y plus, it moves the opposite way. Mine is moving right now. So again, play around, find what works for you and get yours set up to how you want yours to be. Go dollar dollar. And let's go look at dollar 13. All right. So dollar 13, what is that? That's going to tell you, are you working in inches or are you working in millimeters? I'm just going to come out and say it. I prefer metric. It's just easier. makes more sense. We're not going to start a war here, but let's say you're doing everything in inches. You would come in here. Dollar 13 equals one. Send. So dollar 13, that's the easiest one. If you're having issues with it going too far or not far enough, check that one. Now let's talk about soft limits, hard limits, and homing cycle. Those, those three are going to be right here. Dollar 20, dollar 21, and dollar 22. If you want to have a homing cycle happen every time you boot up your machine, dollar 22 needs to be set to one. If you don't want it to home every time you turn it on, turn dollar 22 to zero. Dollar 20 soft limits. For soft limits to be enabled, you have to have at least three limit switches or even inductive switches like you do on the long mill. But you have to be able to tell the machine, hey, go to these three spots to zero out. Then what that feeds into is your dollar 130, which can be seen here. Your dollar 30, dollar 131. $132. And that's going to be the max travel distance on that axis. Let's look at dollar twenty, and it is disabled. So now we're going to come in here. Dollar twenty equals one to enable. So in Gerbil, one is enabled, zero is disabled, and we'll hit enter. Now let's hit 260. It won't go. Travel exceeded. I could put 259 and it'll go 259, but it will not go 260. So if you want to be able to go, use the full length of what you want, you need to put it to, and it's, you literally only can travel 260, put 261 millimeters again, people. And we'll go to back to zero. In hard limits, I mean, there's really not much more to say is if you got hard limits, that means you got all a limit switch or induction switch on every single axis travel. All right, let's uh, mention one more thing about homing, and that's dollar twenty four, dollar twenty five, and dollar twenty seven. And let's get this kind of the x axis off or a bit away from home. So let's hit home and see what what's going on here. So we can see it goes up. And then it slowly, it triggers twice. And it's going to do that on each axis. It's going to, you're going to see two triggers. And here on the X. Twice. The home seek is the feed rate in finding the limit switches. So it's that first one. That one's going to be your faster one. I still like to keep it somewhat on the slower side. Uh, I have mine at 650, not super fast, not super slow. And then you have $1.24, that's the homing feed. So that's after it, it makes initial contact. It pulls off, 
it then goes slowly back until it re-hits that limit switch. And so that's the one you want to go slow. The slower that is, the more repeatable your, Z, your zero position is going to be. In my case, I have it at 25 millimeters a minute. And you can go slower, you can go a little bit faster. But remember, the slower you are, the more repeatable you're going to find that zero uh, position. Then you have dollar twenty-seven, and that is how far to move away from the limit switch once reached. In my case, I right now I have it at a millimeter. So if we went dollar twenty-seven equals five, let's go there. Let's rehome. But remember, whatever you do that to, it's going to pull off. If we, you know, we just set it to five, it's going to pull off five on every direction. And the further away you have it, the longer your homing sequence is going to take. Well, that wraps it up for this video. Hope you all enjoyed our little adventure into Gerbil. And if you have any other suggestions or things you want me to cover, let me know down in the comments below. Again, thank you for watching. Remember to hit that bell and subscribe button to keep up with all the latest DE Hammer videos. And until next time, keep making stuff.